I feel so close to you right now. It's a force field. Original land forms. An original land form are formed by a slow process which involves the natural breakdown of rocks caused by waves, tides, water and wind or other natural agents. I have the key words here just to show. Oh, it's in red, red background. Oh, let me put it here in green. Original landforms include cliffs, wave cut platforms, headlands, natural caves, blowholes and natural beaches. Key in picture one is a picture of a headland. This is identified as a headland because it is the tip of the land and all of this just decreases into the water. In this case it is formed by the erosion of strong winds going this way. Sorry the arrow is not really going this way. Just the way I'm I'm showing you. Just there. So the wind pushes there and the land just you know the sand goes up and in result the water goes a bit up and then erodes and then goes down and you know big waves can just hit it these destructive waves can also erode land into the water in picture 2 is a wave cut platform this is identified as a wave cut platform because the rocks are outside in the water really separate to the mainland. This is the wave cut platform is made by erosion of waves waves mostly. I'll show you the diagram. So let's say here I'll just curl this draw something. So here is the land, here is the water, and so the deconstructive waves hit the mainland, so they go here, and destroys all of the rocks, so let's just call that in, destroys all the rocks, let me just make it a bit bigger, destroys all the rocks, and that becomes the water. So, over here, this, this part, right, falls down, falls down, and stays here, which creates a wave cut platform. Depositional landforms. The definition. The depositional landform is formed by a slow, over time process, which is when materials build up around the coast caused by waves, winds and tides. Depositional landforms include coastal lagoons, sand spits, sandbars, sand dunes and offshore sandbars. Here in picture one is an offshore sandbar. This is identified as a sandbar because it isn't attached to the beach. Here in picture one is an offshore sandbar. This is identified as a sandbar because it isn't attached to the beach. So let me just do the diagram how it's formed. So let me do that. Okay, so it's formed by backwash. So let me draw the beach. Put that in yellow. Yellow. So we'll say here's the beach. And here's the water. Here's the water. Just attach that. So when backwash happens, it pulls the sand into the water so it pulls it here and the sand builds up and creates offshore sandbar here in picture 2 is a sand dune this is identified as the sand dune because it is a hill of sand supported by plants on the beach to keep the hill stabilized so here is an example how it is formed well, not an example of how it is actually formed. So the yellow is the beach, right? The shore is here. And this is all water. 
So on the beach, there'll be little, little hills made by, you know, could be made by footprints or people who ever walk on the sand, create little deep. So if you sit, stand here, we'll push the sand down, it creates a little hill. <laughs> so, when the wind, I'll make the wind go in red, the wind comes, pulls the sand off the ground and makes it build up here. Makes it build up here. And so then, it creates a sand dune. Human impacts. In my opinion, the definition of human impacts is the impact of humans towards the coastal environment or natural environment. Here are two examples. Here in the first picture is litter. This is identified as a human impact because it is caused by humans. This can result in sea creatures dying, decomposition of chemicals in the water, and destroying natural environments for animals which may lead to them in dying. In the second picture is footprints. This is also identified as a human impact because it is caused by humans. This can result in sand dunes, movement of sand, and unstabilization of sand. Natural impacts. In my opinion, the defi definition for natural impacts is the impact on the land that has occurred naturally. An example is longshore drift. Longshore drift is caused by the prevailing wind. The prevailing wind. So how this works is when the tide comes in or the wave comes in, it goes at the direction of the prevailing wind. So it goes in like this. This is called swash, when it, the water hits the sand and then when it comes back, the sand gets pulled into the ocean, which is called back. And then swash brings the sand in and brings it back, brings it in, which keeps the movement of sand on the beach. Over here is a groin, which is pro supposed to prevent this from moving sand across the whole beach which will, after a while, would watch, wash the beach away. So over here, you can see the buildup of sand. Coastal use. This includes recreation, commercial, and infrastructural use. Let's start with recreation. The definition is doing something on the beach or coastline that is for fun, or pleasure. Here is an example of recreation. This is on a boat on the coast or the beach. This is considered as recreation because it's really for fun. Nobody would go super fast on on the beach not for fun. Like you just do that for fun. Commercial. Having a shop or business that is close to the coast which will attract tourists or people. Here in this example is a kiosk kayaking shop, sorry. Which will attract the public since it's right next to a beach and they can train you and help you to kayak. As you can see, right here it also has a cafe which will attract people when it's hot to have cold drink or when it's cold maybe a coffee infrastructure the definition of infrastructure is a way to build or create a better environment in this case a better coastal environment in this case this is a bit of commercial too because this here is uh, a boat a boat club and uh, they probably make you pay money. So here are the boats and yachts in the background a bit there. But yeah, this is help of infrastructure. Also you can see here there's a car park. That's infrastructure. And there's a road that goes here and onto the main road. This is considered as infrastructure because it is of buildings and car parks to help people not park on the beach which will continue on to coastal management. I want to dance by water the Mexican sky. Drink some margaritas by the beach.
In my opinion, the definition is Coastal management is a defense of deposition or erosion on the coastline and can prevent people littering and stuff. For example, bins is one coastal management technique because if we didn't have bins like every let's say 200 meters across the beach people would just be throwing their waste onto the beach which will cause which will cause it to go into the sea and you know what litter does another example of coastal management technique is a groin so let's see what a groin does so we'll destroy this this will be the sand this will be the groin so when long shift long shore drift happens it moves the sand across here this stops the long shore drift and normally we have a pump which pumps all the way back here so it just goes in a continuous circle a groin by the way is this